It goes without saying, but the PlayStation 2 was an amazing system. The most successful system of all time, even. But it brought us so many games that of course some truly amazing experiences got lost in the shuffle. I worked retail at the time, and had opportunities to check out lots of games that I normally wouldn't have spent my hard-earned cash on. And that allowed me to discover one specific game that I came across very early in the life of the PS2 that I feel ended up being one of the most criminally overlooked and underrated titles on the system. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about a complete gem of a shoot 'em up called Sky Gunner. Sky Gunner was developed by a tiny studio called Pixel Arts, and was released in Japan by Sony at the tail end of summer 2001. Sony didn't see the market potential for it in the US and decided to pass on localizing it. Thankfully, a company by the name of Atlas came along and saw the true potential, releasing it in the US less than a year later. Sky Gunner tells the tale of a trio of characters in a sprawling city called Reeve. During an expo, not unlike the World's Fair, an invention called the Eternal Engine has been revealed on board the airship Merveyu. This catches the eye of master criminal named Vanter, who intends on stealing it. Before I continue, I feel like I should explain the world of Sky Gunner just a little bit. To put it simply, it's an amazing mashup of steampunk, French Nouveau, and Victorian era styles. All this is then presented with a classic anime look that's not unlike something we might see in a Miyazaki film. I was constantly amazed with how fully realized the world is. When the police force is outmatched, they call upon a group of mercenaries called Gunners. Well, they never explain exactly what a gunner is, but all we need to know is that there are hotshot pilots that have their own modified, high-powered airplanes that are equipped to deal with more volatile situations. As Vanter's henchmen attack the Merveyu, enter our heroes. Ciel and Copan, known as the Gunners of Reeve, arrive shortly after Vanter puts his plan into action. These two are joined by a new recruit, Fom, who just happens to be aboard the Merveu as Vanter takes over. She joins in the action by shooting her way out of the hangar bay, and this is where things get crazy. Are you the... Let's talk about that later. We better deal with things here first. Right! Why don't you hang back a little to be safe? There's so many of them. Let me give you a hand. <laughs> yeah, we can handle them. But if we cooperate, we can do it faster. The story is told via sepia-toned cutscenes over the course of five stages per character. But they all have their own story arc that sends them in different directions within each stage. The battlefield is a completely free-roaming dogfight with several groups of enemies. You generally stay locked onto a group of enemies at all times. You track their movement from your perspective, which can be very disorienting at first, but once you get a feel for it, you realize just how cool it is. You can easily adjust your trajectory for where you need to be heading and what you need to be attacking. And at the same time, it gives Sky Gunner an insanely cinematic look. You can switch to a more traditional third-person style by holding down the triangle button and switch to the tail cam. This will eliminate all lock-ons and is a good way to focus your attacks over a large swath of enemies. Speaking of attacks, each character's plane comes with an array of weapons and a special ability. Fam and Ciel share the same weapon loadout, but each character has their own unique super move that can give you the upper hand. Well, let's start with the weapons. First off, everyone is equipped with a machine gun, firework missiles, and dog missiles. The machine gun is your primary method of taking out the smaller enemies. Dog missiles will slow down and distract enemies, and firework missiles are good for taking out several enemies at once, helping you rapidly build your combo chain. Wait, chains? Combos? Uh, more on that in a minute. Fom and Ciel share a special kind of missile called cross missiles, which will, after coming into contact with an enemy, drill into its hull. Shooting this cross missile will detonate it. And if you're looking to do some major damage, locking on three cross missiles at once will form a supersized cross missile. Copan, on the other hand, uses pumpkin bombs. I felt these were decidedly less effective, but perhaps I just never knew how to utilize them correctly. The big differences with each character lie in their special moves. 
By hitting the R1 button, Fam will immediately turn toward the nearest enemy, giving you an advantage. Cial will hit the brakes and allow you to fire an excessively powerful machine gun. And finally, Copan will do a powerful drill attack that is capable of taking down the larger ships with one hit, if timed correctly. But you can't use these moves with reckless abandon. Not only do you need to keep an eye on your missile and bomb supply, but you also have to be sure not to overheat your engine. Launching a bunch of missiles or using several special moves in a row will cause the temperature gauge to rise. Once maxed, you have to wait till it cools down before you can use any of these attacks again. Let's go, guys! Wait, how about this? The one who earns the most money here gets the new engine. Fine by me. How about you, Sia? All right, but don't come crying to me when you lose. So, remember when I mentioned chains and combos? Well, there's a whole score attack mentality under the hood of Skygunner that you don't have to pay attention to at all, but it can become quite addictive once you figure it out. Each enemy you defeat earns you money, and at the same time adds to a countdown where you have until that counter expires to shoot down another enemy. As this counter gets higher and higher, so does a score multiplier. So really, the toughest part is finding enough enemies to kill fast enough so that your multiplier continues to go up. This is achieved with combos. Destroying certain groups of enemies at once, say a cannon on the side of a capital ship, will start a chain reaction that will blow up the cannon next to it, and the one next to that, and so on and so forth. This adds up to some huge combos. So it really just comes down to knowing what to attack at the right moment for the best possible streak. It's the true essence of a shooter score attack and the incentive to get good. I started out awful and couldn't understand how the computer was building up the score as it was, but after some practice... You've got to be careful though. There's a number of things that will bring your money earnings down. Like getting hit obviously causes you to drop some coin, but if you manage to get hit multiple times in quick succession, your pilot will lose balance and spin out of control, draining your cash at an accelerated rate. You'll have to mash the buttons as fast as you can before the timer runs out to regain command of your plane. Oh, no. Needless to say, there's really a lot going on in each stage, and I'm still amazed that the game came out just a year and a half after the launch of the PS2. But while the game looks gorgeous, it's not without its hiccups. At times, the game is plagued with a bit of slowdown. Well, I say bit, but it actually happens pretty often. The game can and will slow down to a crawl, and this hit to the frame rate is accompanied by a weird sort of resolution drop. As it turns out, this was a built-in function called variable processing, which allows a drop in resolution to keep a playable speed. If the slowdown bothers you too much, you can enable a hidden option called uniform processing, which will drop the resolution down to 240p for the entire game, giving you a locked frame rate. This is a super cool option to have, but damn, it really makes the game ugly. The soundtrack is just ridiculously good. From top to bottom, every track exudes a sense of high adventure and totally fits the game. The voice acting is also very good, and Atlas was kind enough to include a dual audio option so you can check out the Japanese dialogue if you want. Topping off the absolute complete package that this game is, there are some really nice unlockables, such as a survival mode and time attack mode where you can really exercise the skills that you learned in the main game. There's also a couple of additional characters adding to the replayability. The most unfortunate aspect of Skygunner's failure to connect with a wider audience is that pixel arts faded quietly into the night after leaving such an ambitious, unique, and well-made game. But it wasn't the last we'd see of these characters and this world. A couple of years later, in 2005, the rights to the series fell into the hands of a developer called Easy Game Station, who produced an unofficial, Japan-only, PC-exclusive sequel called Gunner's Heart. This was a game that was completely on rails and is very arcadey from the ground up. You know, it's pretty decent, but I don't know if this is exactly what I wanted from a sequel. It does have its own unique charm, though, but that could just be the Afterburner fan in me talking. I hadn't played Skygunner in quite a number of years, but revisiting it has shown me that it's just gotten better with age. 
If you can get over the occasional slowdown present throughout, you should definitely hunt down this game and play it. And thank you to Atlas for bringing it to the US when Sony didn't see fit. Skygunner can be had for fairly cheap these days on eBay. It's one of the lost gems that begs to be played. So please give this game the love it so badly deserves. Not only do you need to keep an eye on your missile and bomb supply, but you have to be sure not to overeat, overeat, overheat 